Hello and welcome to this lesson on screw thread cycle tips with G-Code. So my name's Mark, I'm from G-Code Tutor and I'm here today with Practical Machinist to look at some ways we can program screw threads by using G-Code. Okay, so we're gonna start off by looking at the G76 two-line screw thread cycle. So this is it here in this program, and we can see halfway down this program here, we have the G76 two-line cycle. So let's have a quick look over that and what it all means. So here we have the cycle blown up a little bit bigger so we can see what it is. So let's go through it block by block, line by line, and function by function to see what it is. So we start off with G76 on the first line there. Now, that next jumble of numbers and letters, that uh, tells the machine about our spring passes. So that PO4 is the amount of spring passes we do. The two zeros following that is the chamfer of the thread. And then the last two digits is the angle of the thread. So if we're cutting metric, it'd be 60 and imperial 55 degrees. So that Q there, this is our minimum cut allowance. So the smallest cut we're gonna do here is 0 0.03 millimeters. So this is in microns. So that's why we have Q30 there and not Q0.03. And that R on the end there is how much we're leaving on for finishing. Now, remember, this is also metric. So we're leaving on around a thousandth of an inch there or 0 0.02 of a millimeter. So on the second line, we state G76 again to let the machine know we're still given details about how we want this screw thread to be performed. So this X dimension there, this is our core diameter of the screw thread. So 18.2 millimeters there is the final dimension that our screw thread will cut down to. Our Z is the end point of the thread. So we're cutting an 18 millimeter long thread here. If our data position zero point is at the end of that part that we're machining. So this is gonna move 18 millimeters to the left or towards the chuck of our datum position. So that's P value there. This is the depth of our thread as a radial form. So this is from the top of the tooth to the bottom of the tooth. So we're calling this 0.6 millimeters and this is also presented in microns. So we would say 600 microns. So Q is the depth of our first cut, and this is also in microns. So if we want to take a 0.16 of a millimeter initial cut, we would say 160 microns. So each pass of the tool, as we are cutting the screw thread, will decrease this depth here. So we're gonna start off with our first cut at 0.16, and it's going to decrease until we get to our final depth. And finally, we have our pitch of our thread. Now this is using F, which we normally use for feed rates, but in the case of screw threads, this is the pitch of our thread. So 1.5 would give us a 1.5 millimeter pitch. Now, some machines prefer a single line version of this cycle. So this screen shows us what the single line version would look like using a G76 again. So our X is our core diameter, like we stated before. Our Z is our end point. So I is our taper of the thread. So if we find the thread is a little bit tighter at the back, we can adjust the taper here to make it uniform across the length of the thread. K is our depth of our thread. D is the depth of our first cut. A is the angle of the thread. Again, 60 degrees for metric or 55 for imperial usually. And F is our pitch. So our single line screw thread cycle looks very similar to our two line. We just condense all the information into one line. Now, as I was saying, some machines prefer single line, some machines prefer two line, and this depends on the age of your controls. So that's cutting externally. If we wanna cut an internal thread, it's almost the same, we just change a few dimensions. So the first dimension we would change is the initial X position, and that's because we're on the inside of the thread and not the outside, so we would change that. The second dimension we would change is the final depth of the screw thread. So we would look into this and calculate this to be the final depth, whichever way we're using the tool. And finally, when we finish our screw thread, we want to wrap it away to a safe distance. Now, if we're internal, we don't want to wrap it up. We want to wrap it down so we don't break that tool. So we would also need to change the X dimension on that part of our screw thread also. 
Now there's often confusion when cutting left hand screw threads, but the process is almost identical. There's only a few things we need to change. And that being, we need to change the direction of the spindle. Now, depending on which way our spindle and tooling is set up, so it normally rotates when we're removing material, we would have to rotate the spindle in the opposite direction. And we would also have to use a left hand inserted screw thread tip. Now these specialist tips, you probably find we need to switch from either a right handed to a left handed holder because we need to change that tip around so it's facing the same way that the spindle is rotating. We can't rub the tool backwards as the spindle is rotating against it. So as we've changed the direction of the spindle, we also need to change the direction that the tool faces. Now remember, we need to use a left hand tip for this also. So we might need to buy a different tool to be able to hold this tip in the correct direction. But that's not all. G76 is not the only way we would cut a screw thread on a lathe. We can also use G32 and G92. So let's have a quick look at what they do. So the G32, allows us to give a point to point control of our screw thread. So this is a quick example here, and we can see that the G32 line is where it locks the spindle and the turret together to give us that screw thread. And then the rest of this information there is we're controlling how far we retract in X, how far we retract in Z, and then we move back and come down to the next diameter of cut and repeat the G32 line. So by using G32, it gives us much more control over exactly where that cutter is going. So why would we bother using the G32 now the G76 is available to us? Well, one reason I can think of is that it enables us to produce tapered screw threads. So by using a G32, we can control each individual point of that tool. So this enables us to be able to produce a very accurate tapered thread because each point that tool at the start, the end and the rapid positions we control within the program. So this enables us to be able to use G32 to produce a tapered screw thread. And that's just one reason we might use a G32. So the G92 is a little similar to the G32, but we don't need to control all its points when we move back. The only point we control with the G92 is the depth of each pass. So if we need more control to be able to calculate those passes and the depth of each pass, we can use G92 to be able to state exactly the diameter of each pass that we want that screw thread tool to go down to. So for more information on screw threads, I have some free articles over on my website at gcodetutor.com in the article section, or alternatively, my CNC lathe course covers all of this in great detail where I talk about exactly how to use all these screw thread cycles and the different ways we would control our machine and produce a perfect screw thread every time.